so kiddos we're out here at a park we're learning about some invasive air potato and i wanted to have this videotape that way let's say other people in different counties of florida or even other places in the world that have invasive species they can learn how to get involved and start helping so this cool looking little vine is the air potato and it's really pretty looking isn't it it looks like a house plant doesn't mm -hmm. it that's because it is you know these are something that's uh people from Kansas would grow in their houses um, but when we set them outside in Florida we live in a place where winters don't exist down here really so this thing flourishes this time of year this plant will actually grow six to eight inches per day so the reason why we call it an air potato I'm not sure if you can get in that far with the camera but this right here guys boop, I'm gonna pop that off that is an air potato now I've seen these things get that big. I've even heard about them getting the size of human heads. Um, but when this thing falls, lands on the ground, it grows a whole new vine. You know, so one of the things that we're gonna be out here doing um, as the Eco Avengers is helping eradicate, helping take this invasive plant away. So we're gonna be collecting these air potatoes. That way they can't breed. You know, and, and you guys have seen me in the past when I've either just torn it like that or I'll take my knife. Remember on other places where it's real thick and I'll go and run my knife around the tree? That's what I'm doing is killing all that life up here. So speaking of up here, look at these leaves and tell me the difference. There's a big difference, right? Yeah. Well, this leaf has been attacked by the air potato beetle. So the air potato is from Asia. The air potato beetle is also from Asia, but University of Florida did a lot of studies before we released these things to make sure that they didn't ever feed on anything native. Now all the time I can see these guys, like look right here, these are getting attacked everywhere. This one has some right on it. So look at all these guys. But look at that salt palmetto now, Brecken. They're not feeding on that. They're not feeding on our native muscadine right there. They're not feeding on the wild coffee right there. They are only feeding on the air potato. Um, so we've had a real high success with this. Unfortunately, right now, um, you can't go to your county extension office and get these because they've actually had to end the program basically due to COVID because there's not enough staffing and things like that to handle it. Um, but we've seen a lot of good success with this. Now, these little beetles, I'm going to put this guy right back here so that way they can form a new little home and I'll keep them kind of protected from the sun right there. Okay. Yep, see them right there? Now, the air potato beetles, they won't consume this potato though. So they're not going to just make air potatoes disappear. What's actually happening as far as the numbers is they've found that it has about a, a 35... <laughs> I love that. You ever see the movie Up? <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> pound it <laughs> so with the air potato beetle they don't consume it as far as get rid of it together what they're doing is making it less dense so let's say that this plant like we see all this it's that dense right well the air potato beetles will make it about 40 percent less dense than that so that's good but that's not keeping it from making these air potatoes and going down and dropping on the ground and then making new vines the following year so that's when us humans need to be getting out here and getting active. And I mean, we're gonna have a blast today because we're in nature, hanging out, learning about other cool plants. Like what's this one, guys? Coffee bean. Yep, that's the wild coffee. So what can we do with this plant? We can make it like stuff for like Yep, you can use the roots and, and chop them up really good and use that for um, bites and rashes for your skin. Um, I could also use that leaf as a natural diuretic and diaphoretic. I mean, like if I'm catching that flu coming on, I can sweat and pee that sickness out faster than my body can eliminate it. Um, but let's say I eat too much of the cabbage palm and I'm a little constipated and I need a case of the poopies. Well, I can also use that root to make some tea out of it, right? And, then, and that works as a natural laxative. You know, so we have to protect our forest if we're ever going to want to be able to come back in here and gather the things that we need, right? So today we're gonna learn how to be eradicating these things. But the main focus that we're doing is we're looking for these little guys and we wanna put them in our bags. So like Zeke's got this um, cool bag right here, Mr. Z here. Now I put it in there, pull my hand out. 
Well, this bag is from Fish Gods. It's actually designed to go on my dive belt so it helped me pick up um, ocean plastic. But as a forager, it works pretty good for collecting elderberries or collecting air potatoes. You know, that way we can go in and, and, and unzip that and throw them in the dumpster later. Um, because we don't want to set those air potatoes on the ground and let them grow into new air potatoes, right? So awesome, kids. Let's have some fun, right? <laughs>